And welcome to Sweet Streams Are Made of These. This is about applying data and metrics-driven development to Apache Flink and other streaming systems. So very related to our topics here. And Lightning version, of course. My name is Kato Schur. I am the developer advocate for the US region at Viverica, who are the creators and maintainers of Apache Flink. And I've personally been coding with Flink since 2017. All right, jumping right in. So what does having better metrics and better data-driven development practices actually solve? What does this actually help with? So in stream processing, especially if you're really, truly leveraging its strengths, it means that you're probably pushing through mass amounts of data ultra fast with complex data transforms. You're probably ingesting multiple data streams, maybe joining them together. Maybe each incoming stream is from a vastly different source or application. Possibly these upstream applications might have incompatible schemas or their timestamps might be based in different time zones. So this is where a powerful, flexible stream processing framework really shines. But it also means that you now have this complex system that the rest of your technical ecosystem may not be prepared to handle, whether that's your downstream applications or syncs or the teams who own them, or maybe the impact on shared resources like shared storage or internal deploy tools that just may be not configured for something that's as powerful and complex. So the main challenge is which basic data-driven principles are gonna be the most effective for developing, sustaining, and monitoring a complex streaming system. So I say solutions, obviously a bit of a generalization, um, but for this short talk, I just picked my top two favorite tactics and I am gonna oversimplify them a little bit. But I picked them because even at their most basic, sticking to these I found can significantly mitigate or even eliminate a lot of these really common development issues. And the first of these two topics, I jokingly, but also seriously, like to call metrics-driven metrics. So continuously using current observations about your application's behavior to define how to better observe your application and allowing those metrics to influence your roadmap priorities and development process. So secondly, is using metrics as a shared language. Setting up a metrics and data-driven cycle that's flexible enough to be used to automate away a lot of the more common people and process challenges. So to set this up, I like to start with this quote, reminding us that you can measure almost anything, but you cannot pay attention to everything. And I like this quote because I hate it. <laughs> it is the hardest thing for me with any data or metrics driven development because I, I just want to measure everything everywhere. I feel like I need this on like a neon sign above my computer. And I also liked, uh, I had a colleague that took this a little bit further. And I love this one because it's an anti-pattern and it just really gives you this great image of just, oops, let's skip there, that one, there we go, sorry. Very important. So this is the one from my colleague where he said, any situation where people can create their own dashboards without any structure quickly starts to look like the cockpit of a 747 airplane. All right, so we have a little bit of a spoiler here. So this is what that looks like. Um, of course, it's a bit of a joke, but it really just shows what an anti-pattern that is. And normally I would say raise your hands, um, but I, I can't see you. I would assume that some of you probably would be raising your hands if you've seen dashboards that look like this, um, maybe your company or other companies. I, I think it's unfortunately very common. So this is my chance to just say, if you can nope out of this, just nope, nope, nope. Uh, no one wants to use those. So um, that brings us to what does the other end of that look like? What are these best practices for actually setting up a good metrics driven metric cycle? So for this, this is my ultra high level checklist. So your metrics dashboard or however you're organizing and visualizing your um, data about your system should prioritize data that's actually meaningful to you. It should be easy to iterate on and the data should be accessible. And I have an example of this, but first I wanna go just one super short level deeper. So it's really about having a dashboard that properly reflects your roadmap your highest risk metrics and your most uncertain ones. And just as a reminder, you know, none of this is mandatory. Obviously you can still build a really great Flink or other stream processing application without applying any of these tactics or philosophies. But when my other engineering teammates and I at my last company, when we started being intentional about this and really checking in with this list, we genuinely saw very measurable results in lower number of bugs and errors, better development velocity, and also in things like our comfort levels during incidents and on the quantitative side, our incident response time 
and in having less frustration over cross-team communications. So what does this actually look like? This is an example, an actual real example, of a dashboard from the team I was on when I first started developing with Flink. And I like this one because it shows that we were very selective with which metrics went on top. The whole dashboard was organized in levels of priority. And the dashboard is flexible. If the engineering priorities changed, so did the dashboard. So for instance, the top panel here is watermarks. Normally, this is not a particularly high risk or uncertain topic metric. However, for us at this stage in our development, it was. So due to the nature of watermarks being so essential for event time operators, late record handling, et cetera, and the fact that our watermark configuration at that time had to start off as an estimated guess, it was based on virtually no information about our brand new incoming data. So keeping watermarks front and center at that time was just integral to us being able to build a more robust and efficient flank system quickly at least until we were confident that it was sufficiently attuned to the normal and expected behavior of that incoming data. So again, we have what's highest risk for you at the time, knowing that this will probably change and likely evolve with the development of your application. Next in this example, so at this time, we had just started joining many different Kafka topics from various unrelated upstream products and teams. And at that point, our Kafka consumption held a lot of uncertainty and it was something we needed to keep visible until its behavior became familiar as well. So we have this most uncertain topic. Next, each of our incoming data streams had its own separate Kafka lag chart. By taking some initial measurements of data flow and looking at the structure of the output, we're able to determine that some of our upstream teams aggregated and transformed their data very differently than expected. So this is where it really became a cycle. Once we noticed that behavior for those incoming streams was not consistent with what we expected. This led us to investigate and discover that our upstream situation was a lot messier and more complicated than we expected. So this information caused us to completely redefine responsibility for integration points in a way that was now based on the behavior of the software itself, also making this a pretty clean cut example of how this plays directly into that good data-driven development process and how that influences our roadmap and back and forth. So I don't really have time to get into the rest of them, but this is a pretty accurate representation of why each panel was where it was and hopefully conveys why this was so helpful to us. And again, just keeping it super basic like this. And lastly, there's that added benefit of being able to use your metrics dashboard to streamline communication between you and leadership or other impacted teams or just new hires on your team. So it's really about keeping this clean for yourself and then being able to use it in a lot of different ways. So, more importantly though, even the best data-driven development can fail easily when it's only built for yourself. So this is where using metrics as the shared language comes in as part of your data-driven development process. So super quick, very simplified version of this. The ideas behind this is to use tools that are familiar to your audience, keep your metrics flexible and modular so you can streamline and automate away a lot of the people and process overhead that comes with developing complex systems. So super short examples are engineering teams downstream you. Most observability vendors are compatible with Slack integrations. So something just as simple and basic as having a channel for you and your downstream teams and using the integrations to populate regular clearly labeled alerts from your well-organized dashboard goes a very long way. Leadership and stakeholders, what we did was just um, embedding auto-updating visualizations into blog posts that gave context that was meaningful and business-centered in its language. So again, keeping it modular, keeping it simple. And I usually don't shove this much into one slide, but lightning speed summary. So um, feel free to take a look at that. And if you want more details, check out my blog. I'll be doing a whole series on this in a couple of weeks. And feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or email. And again, thank you so much to the team here at this conference. It's been fantastic. And thanks for coming. <laughs>